and welcome to Lenovo Unboxed. As always, this is your friend Gavin, along with my good friend Gavin. Hi, Kev. How you doing, Gav? Good. How about you? I'm uh, I'm actually more excited to do this than I have been for just about anything we've done. It's been a while too. We each yeah. time we do one of these, we're coming out of retirement. <laughs> Today, of course, special occasion. Uh, as you probably know by now, it's ThinkPad's 25th birthday, October 5th. Uh, and so we're paying homage, one of our, our mm. words of the day, homage, yep. <laughs> fromage, um, to 25 years of ThinkPad with a thoroughly modern laptop that, again, harks back to some of the laptops of yesteryear, yes, right? Yes, the ThinkPad Anniversary Edition 25. Catchy name. And again, <laughs> we're, we're harking back to 1992, a year that is best remembered in my country, yep. at least, for Bill Clinton, uh, I guess uh, Beastie Boys, Check Your Head, and, and obviously Home Alone, Alone 2. Too. Yeah, 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 great exactly, movie. Yeah. Citizen Kane, Home Alone 2, Raging Bull, <laughs> greatest movies ever. Um, 1992 was the year ThinkPad was born, and so we wanted to reflect. We actually have a couple of, uh, of vintage ones here. This is not from 92 itself, Kev, right? When is this yeah, one this from? is from 2001, 2002, uh, an A31. Um, I didn't actually measure this, but... As you can see, uh, it is thinner than the original 700C, but uh, it's still probably on the close order of 30-something millimeters. It looks um, like an electric car at this point. It's about the same <laughs> specs as some of these new newfangled cars. Yes. Let me, a couple quick specs on the original ThinkPad. So the 700C from 1992, mm -hmm. uh, it weighed about 7.6 pounds, 3.4 kilograms, which is almost identical to my oldest son at birth. <laughs> 2.2 um, <laughs> inches thick, 56 millimeters, which you pointed out was thicker than... Uh, thicker than a uh, hardback copy of the first Game of Thrones book. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and you can that's make all song, kinds of assumptions of, yeah, about Kev based yeah. on him knowing that. Yes. And that I realize that's A Song of Ice and Fire, first book in the series, A Game of Thrones. Just Thank to you, just yes. to cl yep. be clarify. Yep. And then uh, our friend Lee's nasty old T410, which we happen to have down yep. here, yep. Uh, was, just to put it in perspective, this one from 2010 was 35 millimeters. Mm -hmm. So it had gone from... Uh, what did we say, 56 to 35. Anyway, you can see the, the theme here. Uh, and by the way, the original ThinkPad in 92 was aggressively priced at $4,350. That's from, from <laughs> ThinkPad's own marketing. Yep. And uh, the 640 by 480 display available, well, that was available in color. There was also a monochrome version. The 700 was the monochrome. The 700C okay. C was for color. C for color. Actually never thought about that yep. after yep. all these years. Yes. Uh, Infoworld, in their review, and he's calling it a fabulous laptop, yeah. said it was a top-notch display at the time. Yeah, um, and again, for perspective, the, the 2017 version of the X1 Carbon displays 16,776,000 960 more colors than that. Um, <laughs> it's also one third the weight and 70% thinner. Uh, there are a number of numbers that we could embarrass yeah. old tech with, and we all love to laugh at old tech, so why not? All but right. Kev, we should probably cut to the chase. Yeah, because no, everybody no one's, yeah, started watching this to actually yeah, see us unbox it. 20 minutes in, as yeah. usual, and we haven't <laughs> unboxed it. So um, let's check it out. I know you've got the most mm -hmm. magical thing of all I in do. your hand. The ceremonial box cutter. So get, so, it, get it rolling for us. We're going to um, cut that tape. And as we're opening it up here, um, let's talk about, too, how this thing uh, came to be. This was an interesting story. Um, we, we do several big events every year, including CES in Las Vegas. And a couple of years ago, uh, one of the biggest ThinkPad fans in the world, Jin yeah. Lee, and if you're a huge ThinkPad fan, you know who that is. He cornered David Hill, our chief designer at the time, and uh, had it pitched this idea to him. And so what you see here today is a result of uh, conversations between our designers and one of our biggest fans. Yeah, and I was actually there for that. I was at CES. I, uh, I remember that conversation. And it just it started a ball rolling. And, um, you know, as many of you know, did a, uh, David did a number of surveys to see what people were looking for, some of which were possible, some of which were not uh, Obviously, it, it was a long and winding road, yep. and, it, and it took a lot of patience both on the part of our designers and of our mm -hmm. fans who have their own very clear ideas on what specs they want. Mm -hmm. There was a blog post that David put up at one point which um, broke most records on Lenovo blogs, something like 137 page views in a very short period of time. 137,000. Thousand, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Actually, either way, it yeah. would break most of our records on our blogs, but just saying, mm -hmm. a little self-deprecation. Um, but let's talk, Kev, about about the, the item itself and mm -hmm. maybe about the, no the notion, once mm -hmm. we get into it, of... Uh, retro versus homage or fromage. Yeah, um, yeah. The notion of trying to go backwards, mm -hmm. whether you're a car manufacturer, yep. a tech manufacturer, versus trying to go forwards. Right. Nobody actually wants 30, 25 year old technology in this case, or 30 year old car technology. They, they're beautiful, but they didn't drive that well. Um, I, I don't want a 120 megabyte hard drive for sure. Yep, exactly. So, 
Uh, yeah, 120 megabyte hard drive in the very first one. So <laughs> we'll start with the packaging, as you can see here. ThinkPad with the uh, uh, Anniversary Edition logo, 25, and Anniversary Edition 25. It is slick. It's minimalist, yep. as one would expect. Very attractive. Opens like a bento box. We didn't talk about where we are. We're in your mom's basement right now doing this, <laughs> by the way. I wanted to mention that to everybody. All right, so as you can see, this is a little bit of a departure from our normal uh, packaging. It's a retro uh, anniversary edition type packaging. We'll say retro about the packaging, just not about the product. Not so. about the guts, right. All right. So and you if, mentioned the bento box too, Kev. Yeah. Um, obviously, the original inspiration yeah. for ThinkPad was the Japanese lunchbox, yeah. the bento box. You know, right now people are saying, just open it. <laughs> open the freaking thing. All right, so I will let you grab one of the tabs. Please. I will grab the other. So these are magnetically sealed. Uh, and ha. Ah, We'll have Chris dub in some music for us <laughs> after this. The, the first thing that you will notice is that right here in the middle you have ThinkPad Design, Spirit and Essence. Uh, and this is a miniaturized version of the book that David originally wrote, David Hill, uh, originally wrote for the 20th anniversary, updated for the 25th with a new foreword, some notes about the design of this PC. And Kev, when I saw Spirit and Essence, I actually thought it was a, I thought it was a his and hers like cologne and perfume thing. So I misunderstood <laughs> that in the, the original planning. But sorry, go ahead. Oh, well, track points. Track points. Heard so of it. So we have three of uh, our classic track points, or the three of our classic track points here. Uh, the Soft Dome, the original Cat's Tongue, and the uh, Concave. I actually forget the name of Do that. Do they one. each have their own name, really? Yeah, that's Soft Dome, Cat Tongue, and... Uh, of course, everybody watching this right now is going to be like, he doesn't remember that, but I actually don't. It's concave. I'll think of it the later. The concave. Yeah, That's it's great. the golf tee. Good. Right. And as a brief aside, we learned in studying for this mm -hmm. big uh, test that is the mm -hmm. video, we learned that the original 1992 ThinkPad had a track point known as track point two, which actually led us to the question, what was the original track point? And we challenge you, if you're still watching by this point, first of all, good on you. <laughs> but if you're still watching, please, in whatever form you're mm -hmm. watching this video, uh, look it up and answer us yep. in comments. Probably some of you know. You know right. who you are. So let's get uh, cool. to the actual heart of the matter. Let's. I'll set this aside. Yes. Uh, we can talk about the included accessories later. Mm -hmm. So if, Let's see the thing. Let's do this. Let's close this up. 25 minutes let's in. close sure. this up and we'll set it down here on top. So mm -hmm. it comes in a nice uh, protective bag. And here Is that lamb's wool? we go. No, afraid no. not. Darn. Here we go. The Take ThinkPad Anniversary Edition 25. Uh, so just to start on the outside, everyone will notice that we have the ThinkPad logo in its uh, classic form. Actually, it's an updated form because the blue, green, and or sorry, the red, green, and blue mm -hmm. were actually part of the IBM logo in the original, right? So right. this is a new logo paying sure. homage to the original. Paying for homage. The okay. first thing you notice when you open it up is it looks like a ThinkPad. It does, and it has a special <laughs> black uh, rubberized paint. Right. Um, so now, here to the true heart of the matter and what everyone is going to want to see, a seven-row keyboard. Ah, yes. And when when did we switch to a six-row keyboard? Uh, sometime in the last five or six years. I yep. can't remember the exact date. Part of the purposeful evolution of design right, that we always right, hear about. Again, right. not no, never radical changes in the design mm -hmm. over the years, but always what, what David Hill always called purposeful design, and which right. Brian Leonard exactly. would be carrying on. Exactly. And I do want to point out, guys, I think this is going to be the thing that most people are going to be interested to, uh, to see. This is not simply a repurposed old design. Mm -hmm. right? It wouldn't fit. I mean, to make a very long story short and to kind of, you know, assuage the, uh, the concerns or the fears of anyone out there, uh, we simply were not able to take old classic ThinkPad keyboard designs and put them into a newer system. Um, the, it doesn't work that way? It absolutely does not work that way. The yeah. thinness of modern systems, uh, the design of modern systems is much thinner, the connectors mm -hmm. are different, things like that. So this is actually a redesigned from the ground up old style keyboard. Cool. And uh, so the designers, when I talked to them, or the engineers slash designers, when I talked to them a couple weeks ago in Japan, uh, pointed out that the key cap top, what they call the target area, mm -hmm. um, and the pitch of the keys, the mm -hmm. center to center, uh, is within minute tolerances as close to exact, uh, uh, exactly the same as the uh, old style as we could get. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing that did have to change, because the overall system profiles are much thinner, is that while the key cap shape on the top uh, or the keycap is the same shape and the same top area, mm -hmm. is that the bevels on the sides actually had to change a little bit because the system is a little bit thinner. Do you imagine our designers loving a challenge like this oh, or they, just going out of their minds? They were 
just overjoyed. They yeah. love doing this. Yep. This was a great, great project for them. And was this the team here in North Carolina or in Japan? This or was both? the team in Japan. Well, it was both. Yeah, it was yeah. both. It was a absolutely, as with all ThinkPads, a collaborative effort between the design, t- design and engineering teams here in Raleigh and in Japan. And it is always, to me, comforting to know that some of the people who build these and design mm-hmm. them have been doing it for 20 years or more in some yep. cases. So. Absolutely. Um, what What else do we need to know? You went a little deep on the keyboard there, mm-hmm. which I think is, again, fascinating. Mm-hmm. I'm, as you know, I'm not a techie, mm-hmm. but it's always interesting when I think about the design and the challenges they had. Yep. You know, we you, you said to me the other day, mm-hmm. this was not an attempt to recreate a 1992 computer, and that kind of you know rang rang in my <laughs> head for a yep. while. But um, so, what else did they have here? There, um, you, we talked about. So there are multiple track point options you can right. use depending on what you like. Yep. Uh, and they I, did. I have... don't know about you, but I disable my touchpad, and That's so exactly what I do. when my wife or my kids mm-hmm. try to use my computer, they're like, "What happened?" What? And I'm yeah. like, "What?" Same thing. Yeah. Uh, they are unique track points uh, because the center nub or the center attachment point on the newest models has gotten a little smaller. But in order to make this work, uh, we went back to um, something close to the original, uh, but it had to be thinner. So these are, in fact, unique track points. Uh, that's why we've given extras in the box so people can use whichever they like. Sure. And the original track points were more flush with the top of the keyboard right. because the entire profile of the I system remember. was much thicker. <laughs> um, so the one key difference that I think people are going to pick up on here is that this uh, divot, right, these Mm -hmm. uh, chamfers here, Mm -hmm. uh, as they're technically called, um, are... Chamfers? Chamfer means to angle something in design. Okay. uh, Are unique uh, and new for this keyboard in order to get a classic ThinkPad keyboard profile into a modern system height. So that was uniquely done. And uh, they went back, actually, and uh, this has the classic assortment um, of the uh, blue screened functions, yep. right, as per the old keyboard. And I know we're going to get questions about the Think Light. Um, mm-hmm. Long, 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 long story short, uh, there's just no thickness here. The old systems had an, an overhanging lip that let us put the Think Lights up there. Sure. Um, just wasn't possible for this. So and for team... those who don't know, the Think Light was just a little tiny light. Was it mm-hmm. in the center up top? Uh, that... Offset, but kind of pointed to... to uh, Ca- it cast least... what I always thought was actually a fairly dim light on your yep. keyboard. So to, to me, I'm, I was happy when they went with the backlight. Right. It was always a thing that made ThinkPads different, but, but then once I had a backlight... people love I it. Like, mm, uh, I yeah. loved it. It was very cool. And it was many, many years before any keyboards were backlit, as far as I know. Sure. Uh, but what the team did is, uh, in going back to the original screening for the location of the functions. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, all the newer systems to activate the keyboard backlights, kind of an industry standard, uh, you press function and the space bar. Uh, uh, uh-huh. But we went back to the Usually original here. think light uh, uh, activation locations we'll of function press, press. and page up. That's awesome. Uh, and that was originally designed that way on purpose because the whole point of having a think light is that you needed to use your ThinkPad in the dark. Mm-hmm. So therefore, if you're the holding easiest it, thing to find, you right? can find the yeah. upper and uh, upper right and lower left corners sure. in the dark. Press both of those. You could at the do same that time. sober or not in the middle exactly. of the night. You could find exactly. those, no problem. Um, talk, talk to me a little about the guts too. I don't want to forget the uh, sure. the specs. Um, mm-hmm. And again, you know, we were not going to put 1992 specs in this thing. So I assume, no. the, I assume the guts are are uh, familiar to people who have bought recent ThinkPads from us. So. Yes, absolutely. This is a thoroughly modern laptop. Uh, 19. I'm glad point, to hear. <laughs> yeah, uh, a, a, sh- a hair less than 20 millimeters, 19.95 okay. millimeters. Uh, comes in at 1.58 kilos or 3.48 pounds. Um, it has an i7 Intel uh, seventh generation processor inside. Sweet. So full modern processor, uh, discrete GeForce graphics, a 940MX. I don't even know what that means, but I, so, I think it, the graphics look pretty. Yep, supports That's... 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, uh, modern SSD, PCIe, uh, NVMe SSD. Um, and to address one of the other uh, elephants in the room, mm-hmm. uh, it is a 14-inch FHD 16x9 display. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and I know that this will be a subject of much, 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 much discussion. Uh, but Already suffice... is. <laughs> How you doing, Reddit? Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> suffice it to say, there are, uh, while there are a number of options out there in the industry for things like various types of tablets and things with different aspect ratios, those are custom, have to be ordered in massive volume, uh, and just were not financially feasible for this. Uh, we know people wanted it. Uh, I believe David did tell me, though, that in the poll, uh, 16 by 9 was the second most preferred. So at least we, at least we got the yeah. second choice. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, that is what it is. And Sometimes uh, dreams crash up against reality, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, I and I have in my life every day. <laughs> uh, I have fired one up. I have used it, uh, and it's beautiful. Um, it's, uh, it is an FHD touch. 
right? So it's uh, it's an on cell or in cell, depending on which terminology you want to use. Touch, so it doesn't have any cover glass, so it doesn't actually look like a touch screen, but it is. Sure. Mm -hmm. You want to do ports? Yeah, for let's old do time's ports. sake. Um, All right. So we've got. I know we're running long. Yep. Chris, how long are we here? How many minutes <laughs> in are we? It's been a while. He's just shaking his head. Yeah, that's and he all looks, right. He looks a little drowsy to me. Sorry, I did want to point out we've got uh, regular camera microphones as well as an IR camera, mm -hmm. so you can do facial recognition for log on. Cool. Okay. And then we'll do a little around the horn on the ports here. Sure. Uh, headphone port, USB A, mm -hmm. HDMI, another USB A, Ethernet, just uh, sorry, what was I going to say? Uh, SD card, <laughs> the uh, lock slot, mm -hmm. and then around here on the other side, we've got uh, the power port, uh, a third USB A port, and a USB C Thunderbolt 3 port. So fully modern arrangement of ports. Uh, also have docking on the bottom. And as you can see from this shot, it does have the uh, hot swappable battery. Right. So there's one internal battery. The In the box here is a second battery. To double your battery yep. life. And there assume. are also options available for uh, even larger batteries that stick out sure. and increase your battery life. Okay, good. Um, Kev, we have one more thing I wanted to do. And uh, again, uh, yep. you know, we are always uh, we're always looking for ways to prolong yeah. these videos a little bit. Yep, exactly. Um, and why, why, so why stop a good thing? Yeah, right? you know, um, you know, people are just dragging yeah. the little red line forward. <laughs> um, no, we had some some questions. So the Lenovo yep. Insiders are our global sort of uh, band of our SWAT team, as mm -hmm. we call it, yep. of of super fans. Uh, again, Jin Lee, the inspiration for this device, mm -hmm. is one of them. Yep. Um, and we have some other luminaries who have weighed in with questions. All right, shoot. Um, and so a couple of them, you may have addressed a couple of yeah. these, but we'll go through them real quick. Mm. So Otley, our good friend Otley in Iceland. The, the man yeah. with the ThinkPad logo tattooed on his forearm. Exactly. You know, a craft beer aficionado yeah. and bartender, yeah. uh, extreme metal bassist and uh, ThinkPad tattoo lover. And I've met him a couple of times. He's a I have yet to make nice it to guy. Iceland, but uh, he wanted to know how many versions of this will there be, and can he order all of them? Mm -hmm. Will there be a one per person limit? Right, and so obviously we are not <laughs> filming this on October fifth. So as it stands right now, to my understanding, is it not <laughs> October fifth today. <laughs> uh, the, well, they're seeing it. It will be. Uh, there will be one, uh, one, one global model of this with different uh, keyboards in the countries in which it's offered. So that'll be really the only difference uh, between the models is just yep. the different language keyboards. And as we always say, check in your, you know, check mm -hmm. with your local Lenovo seller or check yep. on Lenovo.com in your country. Yep. Obviously, the videos we do are global, but um, things vary from country uh, to country. And will um, there be a limit on how many you can buy? Is it twelve? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm of the opinion that any uh, Lenovo country uh, sales organization that offers this for sale, in that country will be glad to sell you as many as you They'll like. They'll sell you all of them <laughs> if you've got the cash. Just show up with bags of cash. Yep. Uh, Arthur, our good friend who lives in Kansas in the mm. U.S., uh, wants to know if it has a hot swappable battery. You did mention that, yes, right? Yes, it does. And and he asked about the Think Light as well. So we had the the interesting yep. sort of homage to again yep. back to the fromage. Yep. Team did look at it. It just wasn't possible or feasible, yep. uh, but it does have backlight. Yep. Tassarinci, who's in Switzerland and mm -hmm. who has frequently sent us his amazing photos of mm -hmm. coffee drinks with his ThinkPad yeah. with the mountains in back, uh, asked how many rows on the keyboard. This was before the guys uh, saw had their NDA uh, right, right. Uh, version of this thing. Seven. So obviously seven rows. Uh, Jeremiah, who's here in the U.S., uh, wanted to know, will the components used be original retro parts, and can uh, ThinkPad retro parts be used with older models? Uh, unfortunately, no. As I said, it just simply was not possible to take an old keyboard design, location of screws, connectors, thickness, uh, any number of other considerations. That would also void your warranty. Well, you know, I'm not really concerned if you're putting trying to put a keyboard into a. You just need that'll... a hammer and <laughs> yeah. a pair of pliers. Uh, but just to point out that the uh, the bezel design, that what we would call the C cover in, yeah. in computer uh, engineering speak, uh, that goes around the keyboard and the keyboard are uniquely designed for this model, okay. so not retrofitable to anything else. Enough said. And then, uh, well, here, this was another one that maybe can play off that. Oren, uh, yeah. who's in, uh, I think, Melbourne, Australia. He is. Uh, wanted to know if this is a one-off or if we could see additional retro ThinkPads in coming years. Um, never say never. Right now, it is what it is. It is the, 20, the ThinkPad Anniversary Edition 25. Um, but uh, let's see how we Just go. Just wait 25 more years and you'll exactly. get your answer. Uh, Thomas, uh, who's in Germany, mm -hmm. one of our good friends and mm -hmm. the insiders, wanted to know how many of these are going to be produced. I assume it's a limited run. Uh, it will be a limited run, so act now. Get yours quick. Um, <laughs> Call now. Call the number in the corner <laughs> yeah. of the screen. Yeah. <laughs> Just over there. And then one final question. This came from Oren in Australia, yeah. but I know it's been asked by many people. Uh -huh. Is Kevin available for parties? Yes, he is, but he's not cheap. Yeah. 
Enough said. All right, good. I think that concludes our production today. Uh, again, check in with your local Lenovo friends, whether it's a, a Lenovo seller dot com, mm -hmm. uh, your social media friends in your country. Uh, stay in touch with us. We'd love to hear your comments. Uh, answer our trivia question about the track point. Yep. And uh, Kevin, it's good to be back with you, buddy. Pleasure as always. All sir. right. Take Thank care, you. everybody. And we're back. Sorry, uh, it's 25 <laughs> years later now. We just wanted to pick up where we left you off. You look amazing to be. You 75. look great. You look so well preserved, <laughs> like Walt Disney. Um, listen, uh, we, we did forget one thing, and you know, when you unbox something, it's good to actually get all the stuff out of the box. We yep. neglected to do that. So let's talk about what else is in there, and then we'll we'll get lost. All right. So we have a um, a compartment section over here uh, with a little red box that has the uh, setup and instruction manual. I'm picturing Japanese food stuffed into these. Is that bad? <laughs> because it's a bento box? Yeah. That would start to smell after a while. I know. All right. Uh, and then down it. here, we have the uh, battery. Okay. Um, as I pointed out, this is the three cell battery that ships with the product, but there will be uh, other options available to expand your uh, battery life. Mm -hmm. Batteries are way smaller now than I realized. Yes. Uh, and then here in the um, other compartment, we have the power adapter. Which is great because mm -hmm. then you can keep using yes. it. Yes. Uh, and I will point out as a final bonus, uh, while it does ship as uh, all machines of this generation that have the classic power tip or the most recent generation of yes. power tip, uh, it is the uh, small yellow square power adapter. Uh, but because this system has USB-C Thunderbolt 3, uh, it can also be charged with a uh, one of our USB power adapters as well. Cool. We're totally done now. I think we are totally done. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone.